Oh, it's lovely to be in the studio today, Frankie. Thank you. Um, and it'd be great to introduce the Neuros uh, followers to a little bit more about you and your work. So maybe we could start by talking about what um, your biggest inspirations are. I think for me, my biggest inspirations are food and drink and kind of all about the kind of the good time um, and uh, yeah, I guess sort of like everyday objects. Um, I'm really, really into still lifes, particularly at the minute, and kind of, but kind of making them more sort of modern and sort of, um, I guess, like up to date that people can yeah. sort of relate to. Um, yeah, they're, they're probably my biggest inspirations. So, when you work on a piece, do you have your the idea of where the piece is going in mind, or does it evolve as you work on it? Yeah, it ca it always evolves. It always, I think I'll have a kind of starting point, albeit a particular cocktail for example or some fruit or a fruit bowl or a vase and then from there it kind of does go off a bit I'm, I don't think any painting I ever start kind of looks exactly how I imagined it it always goes off on sort of, sort of a different tangent but yeah normally there's sort of be a, a sort of focus point of maybe like a vase of fruit um, or bowl of fruit I should say and yeah it kind of it goes from there Co colour is very important in my work. I would say I normally know the colours I'm going to use when I yeah. start, um, more so than the subject of the painting. So the palette kind of the palette, drives it out. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm kind of obsessive about my colour palettes to a point where if I sort of introduce a colour that I didn't really mean to, or it doesn't work, that you know, I sort of that that has to go. Um, yeah, I'm very I'm very into sort of colour combos that you wouldn't necessarily think work but they kind of work in a really like sort of great sort of clashing way so what's your favorite color combination that you've put together i think my f i use a lot is brown and pink yeah brown and pink is a good one and i'm a big fan of a kind of i'd call it like a a kind of like a, di a dirty olive green I feel like a chartreuse yes yeah. yes exactly <laughs> that um that that with a kind of like pale blue yeah. is great um but yeah i'm i'm sort of color is very important i'd say in, in all my paintings I think your color combinations almost have a, a slight textile design to them yeah they're definitely colors that would go together well yeah in, yeah with fabrics and things so it's nice to see that translated into your work yeah and um with your techniques do you set up your still lifes or is it all things that are going on in your head or do you actually set up your yeah negronis and your um, tables yeah i mean i drink enough to they should be they should be in there but yeah it's again it's a bit of a mixture i i went through a phase where i was like setting up quite a few still lifes to photograph and draw from but i found in doing that if, if i've got them in front of me i tend to copy them too much yeah. and then they go down a kind of almost too realistic route and i was finding that i was painting or drawing them out and then purposely trying to like strip them back more and sort yeah. of sit and simplify them so i find actually a lot of the time i like to paint from memory because yeah. it kind of gives it that very sort of basic um you know your how we how we imagine objects for example i, use, I paint pears a lot the first time i started painting pears was completely from memory and then i was like right well i'm going to start you know drawing them and studying them and seeing how they look and i was like no I, the, the way i initially started painting the pair in that kind of that sh unique shape oh, so yeah i mean yeah. that's interesting because it's like the memory that resonates with yes. people because if you're painting that from memory that's the way someone else will be conjuring up the way that they think yeah. a pair looks yeah actually maybe the pairs yeah yeah maybe. and i look at often at you know sort of other artists and it's sort of you know if you look at that i can't remember names off the top of my head but like classic still life paintings and how they depict pears it's like you know so i mean pears we think about they come in so many different shapes but yeah it's just i think it's what's interesting is that that's how i remembered the pear looked and that's how i now depict it in my in my paintings mm. and your paint technique we talked touched talked about earlier so you mainly work in acrylic yeah. and pastel yeah yeah oil pastel yeah with a little well sort of a kind of teetering on the edge of using oil in, in some parts of the paintings but yeah largely acrylic and oil pastel I love um, that's kind of that normally comes at the end of a painting and I'll sort of use it for various like accents and kind of um, 
little details here and there. Um, I find I, I went through a phase where I was using oil pastel quite a bit, but it's largely now just sort of the like finishing touches. Uh, just gives it that kind of crisper, almost like illustrative kind of feel, I think, to some, some parts yeah. of it, yeah. And when you're painting, do you like to listen to music? What's the soundtrack to yes. uh, Frankie's painting? <laughs> Uh, yeah, always listening to music. Uh, it massively varies. I listen to a lot of what I would call dad rock, which is, <laughs> I guess, like Steely Dan and Talking Heads, which is, I guess, that's well, exactly the sort of music my dad still listens to. Um, occasionally a bit of hip hop. I have Radio 6 on a lot. I find yeah. um, what I've found is I like to have music in the background. I, not actually in my ears like i've got my air my airpods I, I sort of use them i don't really use them in my studio anymore because if it's in my ear and it's too loud it's distracting so i like to just have it on the background sort of quite quietly yes and we have to talk about your titles because they're always amusing <laughs> and add the extra dimension to your pieces so how do you come up with your titles i think i like to keep them a bit cheeky i think I think that's probably one of the words I've used to describe my work is a little bit cheeky and I guess I think sometimes I, I mean I, they always I always name my pieces at the end they, I don't have them okay in, yeah. in my head when I'm painting them um and I'll any kind of opportunity to get an innuendo in there or <laughs> a, pun. <laughs> a pun I do love a pun I mean I wouldn't say strictly speaking I would like puns but I it just when it comes to like fruit if they can be it's a little bit of a cheeky side. I um yeah, I'll I'll try and make that happen. They don't always come. Sometimes I'm I'm stuck and they and it has to be very simple, sort of two pears and an, an orange or whatever. But uh yeah, I there's guess, a, yeah, if it comes and it works, yeah, then yeah. yeah. But yeah, they always make us smile. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Is that is that all right? Yeah. Perfect. And scene.